When I was a lad, my old nan would tell me stories of magical places. Tales of far-off lands with golden-haired maidens and oath-sworn knights. Lands rich with drink and lavish feasts. I never believed those stories until I found Toussaint. This is a land left untouched by the tides of war, easily rivaling Velen or Ard Skellig in size. In Toussaint, simple folk live simple lives. They work the fields, peddle their goods, and tend to the vineyards, making the finest wines this side of the Pontar. It's a land ripe with opportunity, full of wild beasts to slay, maidens to defend, and long-lost treasures just begging to be found. Here a man never pangs with hunger, never wants for company, and never goes anywhere without a drink in his hand. But with all this debauchery and drink, you might wonder what brought the white wolf to this land of sheep. Well, I think it's time I told you a story. A beast stalks us, hunts us in the night, and only the Witcher can shake us from this nightmare. Thank you, guys. So again, hi guys. Uh, we are super excited for being here. And this is Marta, my colleague from Concept Art Team. Hello, yes, here am I. And here is Kasper, our Urban artist. Uh, we probably met some of you guys last night. Thank you for that, it was super cool. I hope we can get even better evening tonight. Uh, but again, thank you guys for inviting us here for this event. We're super happy for being here, super excited. And today we'll talk to you, with you about kind of our work. Uh, from, from what we did for Blood and Wine. Uh, just kind of, our presentation will be divided in four parts. The first part's gonna give you like kind of short introduction about who we are and what we do. Uh, after that, we'll give you kind of an insight of what kind of art challenges we had while working on the Blood and Wine. And after that, the, the core of the presentation will be, we'll give you some examples of the solution we, we kind of worked together on and an examples of how it worked in a game. And after that, I hope we're going to get some free time for you guys to ask us any question for the Q&A time. So please hold those questions to yourself for the, for the end presentation, okay? Uh, so, Marta, who are you? Okay, I am a concept artist. So what does it mean? Um, someone could say that I just draw and paint cool things, that's all. But it's not exactly like that. I'm not an, an illustrator. Uh, mostly, I focus on the design, how some things like crowds, characters, NPCs, locations, environments should look like. It's like in a theater, you have scenography and costumes and there's somebody who has to you know, work on it. And it's the same thing in, in the game dev. It's quite interesting and important in, in, this, in the same way because I have to say something about these characters, about this location, just by visual language. Uh, so, it's very creative, it's all about imagination thing. I <coughs> still remember when I was a child, I get from my godfather the best present ever. It was the rule book of first edition of Warhammer. And I, with this experience, I started to imagine my own stories, my own characters. And obviously, I tried to draw it. And my work as a concept artist is just a continuation of this, you know, childish fun. But it's still cool. So, when my work is finished, I give these concepts to Casper team. Yeah, so basically uh, what I do, I like to tell that I create virtual worlds, which is super exciting for me because when I was a small kid, when I started playing games because I'm a gamer with all my heart, uh, the thing that I was 
beside playing games, I was trying to figure out how, how the environments are done, how the tricks they, the game developers did. It was super cool for me to, to figure kind of this puzzle behind the game. And doing this right now for a living, it's my job right now, it's kind of a dream job for me. So um, it's very exciting to create a whole world for you guys to explore, to, to kind of get immersed into the, to this um, different environments, different worlds, different lands. And uh, I would say this is like my dream come true, and this is like one of the best jobs you can ever get to, to be able to be kind of happy with all the million players you know, behind in the world, being uh, happy with your work and seeing this work and, and actually, um, you know, kind of like your work, whatever. So, yeah, so um, this cooperation we, do, we are doing is kind of creating this world for you guys. And, and the first ever project to work together with Marta from, from start to finish was the Blood and Wine for us. So that's why we're going to use this as an example for you guys to uh, visualize and show you the, the final product we, we kind of worked together and brought to you. Uh, so just one more question before we're going to start. Who played and finished the Blood and Wine? Okay, because okay. I'm asking you because there might be kind of slightly spoilers. So <laughs> if you're going to have those, you can just ask you guys for cover your ears, go out wherever, grab a beer and come back like in five minutes. But I, I'm sure it's nothing big, so. Okay, uh, so uh, the Blood and Wine, what we did was kind of very exciting for us because after we finished The Witcher 3, which was kind of grim, kind of depressing environments, kind of, you know, after the world, the land was destroyed, people were struggling to survive, here, it was totally opposite. We were trying to figure out how we can create Toussaint from the books, but the Toussaint from the books um, was basically different, it was kind of different in feel, kind of different in look, it was extremely different because it was land filled of, you know, sun, wines, uh, happy people, kind of bright, bright land. So it was different. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, it's still part of the Witcher universe, so behind this colorful thing, we also had to, you know, hide something dark and, you know, uh, very, yeah. very, 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 very exactly. dirty. Exactly. Very, which is very, no. It's hard, it's hard, it's tricky. That's why I wanted to figure out how to do it. Uh, so what this one of, was one of the challenges. The other challenge that wasn't like a one small level, it was actually an open world region. It's kind of as big as Valen from The Witcher 3, which was pretty huge. And as you know, it, this, this wasn't the um, standalone game. It was expansion pack, so the production time was much, much shorter for us. So we had to figure out how we can kind of get together in teamwork and get good results in a very short time. And this is going to be the presentation about how we kind of Also, get remember this. that it's, you know, it's the last part of the Guards and Venture shot. It should be, you know, this, you know, wow, you know, the best story ever. Yeah, this was which you can remember the, after many years. Exactly, it was the adventure for The Witcher. It was the adventure you should be giving guys uh, saying goodbye to the Geralt, basically. But to have in your head that this was pretty good. So it was kind of a big change for us because we knew the pressure of The Witcher was pretty, pretty high. Um, so uh, for the presentation, we got a case study for you guys. Uh, City of Buclair is one is going to be like one of the, the the case studies because this is the main region, the main part of the region of Toussaint. This is the capital of the Toussaint, and the other one part is the tournament. Marta's favorite, right? Yeah, maybe I will say about this later, but yeah, yeah, tournament. Yeah, kind of, this kind of, uh, she likes uh, tournament and knights and swords and things like that. Uh, okay, so this is back Buclair. This is the final Buclair in a city. This is the one you can wander around, explore, see, uh, and. We were trying to get away from, from Novigrad as far as we could in terms of how it looks, how it felt, how it kind of gives you the immersion. Uh, the big, the big um, difference is that the, the, sorry, the Buclair is on a, on a hill, it's on a slope. So uh, we had like open vistas almost on every corner, which is what, what we are trying to actually achieve there. We got different districts, we got the harbor, as, as you know, uh, the Toussaint wine is like the one of the most uh, famous wine on the Witcher lore, on the Witcher world. So this is the kind of uh, kind of harbor where it was sent out to the different parts. But it, it's kind of big. It's not small. So it's not like you got like two or three streets. It's actually four district city, right? Yeah. Also, we had so big landmark, which is Clay Palace which we wanted to create very visible for every corner of this land. So, yeah, it's also some kind of, you know, level design you know, problem to solve. I just hope you guys see something there, but... 
Ah. Okay. Uh, so um, from that, we had we had like kind of our own um, kind of thoughts how we can create the, uh, the sorry the booklet from the books. But we we started with references, right? Research is absolutely you no know, basic thing in our work. So, you know, Tucson sounds very French, so first trip was quite obvious. We were looking in Provence, in, in Bordeaux, and other you know, French outskirts and, and high hills and, and vineries. Also, we were looking in Italian and or even Greece, Spain, you know, culture references. Because, you know, it's very warm and, and bright place, so we had to, you know, put it in our, in our game also. And it's, Tucson is, you know, very rich in, in this, in, in, you know, in Colorful, the, right? Colorful, full of life, basically, yeah, land. Yeah, so Renaissance style of, uh, of, Italy, of Italian architecture or, or from, from, from uh, you know, Florence, from Venice, it was very, very influencing for us. Because, right, you know, Novigrad is pure, you know, late medieval, you know, city. And so Tucson should be a little bit, you know, further from in the historical, you know, period. Yes, so we kind of took the idea from the actual references and twisted it for our own needs. Because we don't copy stuff, we're just trying to figure out our own stuff. It should be able to feel like it's from the Witcher world, but the two songs kind of off. So because we're trying to aim for, for this kind of uh, feel that the, when the player is gonna see the two songs for the first time, they'll be like, whoa, it's a Witcher game, but it kind of doesn't. So we're trying to, to figure out how we can tackle that. And so um, we'll give you a few examples, as I said, of our teamwork and our uh, solution and our kind of the final product. So um, when you start working on the bookler, uh, my team start to block out to create this kind of very simple map, 3D map for, for the city. Uh, and at this point, uh, when we figured how we can, you know, sorry, uh, how we can start from the quest team and the story team, we got the um, information about few spots in the city there's gonna be like Like the first one was of course the palace, main square, cemetery and, ca and catacombs and uh, temple and some kind of smaller plazas. So we took those, uh, we took those um, locations and we put, could connect those with kind of, at this point, uh, for us, interesting streets. So this is like the very first kind of playable block out for the, for the book layer, which is super far away from, from what we actually finished when, with our game. But then again, we also had like different ideas from Quest and Story Team for the locations. And uh, we only tried to figure out the locations for, for the spots, and we gave it basically to Marta team and told them, guys, we need like, location X in spot e, uh, you know, X, and please figure out what you can do there to make it interesting. And real cool, real cool example is uh, on the top, top right, basically. At some point, we just want to have police station in Buclair, which- Garrison, kind of, maybe. Garrison, but I still remember <laughs> this as a police bank. station. <laughs> but yeah, so basically we just told Marta team, guys, please figure out here what you can do, how you can make the interesting thing. So Marta did, yeah, I get this very raw screen for our engine, and I just you know just start to draw and overpaint this with very you know, you know simple shapes. You know, I had already uh, this concept on the left side uh, of the you know main building of the garrison, so I just put this you know very 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 clear block out uh, on the because I had some information from Quest Designer, for example. Uh, hey guys, we're going to put some kind of riot, you know, on this place. So there's a huge plaza, you know. Uh, also, I prepared this little gate on the right side to, you know, because it's cool if you have one than more. If it's cool to have one, just more than one, you know, approach to this location. So okay, it was quite cool, but suddenly. Well, it was cool, but. As we know, the quest team, the story team, they gave us like tons of ideas, but they, at the same time, they killed like 2,000 tons of ideas. They're like instantly, instantly trying to figure out what's gonna be the best location for us. So it turns out the police station was a no-go, so we had to kind of think about this location again, and they were like, hmm, let's go and tr try to create an antique theater here. We're like, okay, yeah, why not, let's do this. So again, we had the location, we had the landmarks, and we were like, guys, it's up to you to figure out how we can create antique yeah, theater here. it sounds very, here. you know, strange, uh, you know, amphitheater in, in Buclar, okay, we will try this, but... We can do it. Yeah, actually, it wasn't so bad idea, because, you know, in Garrison, uh, this location would be probably most 
mostly of our you know, player time will be closed. So yeah, but it's be covered with walls. We will walls lose this very over. cool vista from this side, and yeah, exactly. with amphitheater, it's wow! It's you, know, you can see whole har arbor, and you know. Basically, from here you can see district. almost the, so the whole to Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't bad, but. Of obviously, our quest time changed the mirror one more time. So we but also from, from from the other idea here, as you can see, we got the towers that are still in from the gray blocks, but they were the towers from the police station that were kept because we're trying to figure out how we can break down the kind of boring end this time, uh, city, uh, the, line, the line of the city basically, and also those towers uh, led the player for the interesting parts. So they were also like this kind of level level design elements. So we we took those and we stick to those as far as we could. But as Marta said, also the Antique Theater, we, that, we did a blockout with a simple quest there, it worked, but the team were like, no guys, it's kind of, no. -uh. So again, they came up with, a, with the idea of Roman baths, and we're like, okay, cool, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> and um, we just gave it to Marta team guys, wherever do what you want to do with it, we do it anyways. And this is the concept part they came up with, how long? Okay. Uh, we didn't years. complain because actually we had something similar from our old concept of city hall localization. Uh, so this is this arches which you can see on this concept uh, are from the something you know different. We did it you know before we approached this location, but you know just by you know adding few elements, just by pumping it up, we we create absolutely new location. So I think it's it was a good decision for everybody. Uh, and I think it looks cool in game. Yeah, exactly. This concept art, as Marta said, was done in a less than a day. And this, this gave us the, the basic atmosphere, the basic idea for the location. Of course, the final location is kind of different, but the basic idea, the basic layout, the basic kind of magic behind it is the same. So uh, if you haven't played this, this is the Mandragar Theater. Uh, and in the final game, it looks like this. As you see, we got the yellow tower in front of us from the police station. We, of course, added some kind of bridges to, to help the players to move on it kind of easier. But it's kind of nice, but we got the, still the vista from the whole to Song. And we got the big house from the police station here. But the over, overall feel to it is kind of this rich party for rich people at night. So it's filled of crowds, filled of decoration. And as you can see from police station to here, we kind of did a long way. And it's just a fun fact that the most iterated location in our Tucson was actually this place. We had like five or six different iterations of this location, and this is the final one, and I think we can say that this is one of the best iterations we actually did. So, as Marta mentioned before, as from the concept art, uh, even that we got like a lot of iterations here, every single iteration gave us kind of the basic idea for another iteration, like kind of this le Lego blocks that we can use and, and, and work with it. So it's not like we are throwing away our work, we never do this. We're just trying to figure out what's good, what's bad, what we can cut off and took off from the ideas and put together a new idea. So basically this is the, the, the iteration yeah, process. We have to be flexible, you know, we can be stuck to one idea and, you know, cry after it. It's normal to, you know, have a lot, a lot, a lot of changes and... Yeah, like producers hate us because they were like, guys, it's finished, no, it's not, we're gonna do it again. And they're like, Good guys, we don't have time for that. No, we have time for it. We're gonna <laughs> make it better. So, um, I don't know what's happening right now. It wasn't me, seriously. But that's why also, you know, we can focus on con no, of pimping up our concept arts in you know, technical ways. Those black and white concept of uh, our Roman buffs, Mandragora, well, it it's, was quite raw. It, it, it's not like we have it so much time to, you know, to perfect rendering of it or perfect, you know, you know polishing, de polishing details or uh, and etc. So we have to work fast. You know, we have maybe one day per concept to to show the, 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 the guy, to the guys from the environment team and work on the next iteration. Exactly, and uh, the other cool example here is uh, the tournament, tournament fields, basically. So we had like a small part of terrain. We knew that we we're gonna have the tournament in our game, and basically we just gave it like a very rough screenshot for the Marta team from the terrain, and they were like, guys, please figure out how we can actually put a whole night old school uh, sword fighting night tournament here. And Marta's like, okay, this is my dream job. Yeah, exactly, because... Um 
To be honest, I'm very engaged in historical reactment movements. I like wearing medieval clothes and hit people with heavy things like swords or halberds and anything. So it was like, you know, my dream job to create like my, you know, you know, dream tournament, which I want to, you know, be part of it. Yes. So, yeah, yes, yeah. Marta was like, God, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> it was my wish list. Okay, I want this Justin Arena, I want this Melee Arena, I want this, this, and this, and this, and this. So I prepared this, yeah, for this final you know, sketch to, to, to our guys. Uh, I had to rethink some things like, I realized it would be cool to have, for example, our leg behind our scenes during you know, adjusting fights or during you know, uh, our racing, yes. uh, yeah, horse racings. So that's what I prepared for, for them. Yeah, this is cool. They, this gave us like the huge base to work in us. It was much faster for us, much easier for us to create this location. And also, uh, concept arts like this, it's not close to how it looked in a game, but then again, this gave us the inspiration, the kind of the feel we were aiming for in this location. So this gave us this kind of fuel for us to make it tournament-ish, night-ish, yeah. Marta happy-ish. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this was even that again. This is not like um, final piece in the game. It gave us inspiration enough, and also we had this kind of conversation here because Marta put a, a kind of. House? What is this? In the background. House, maybe more, you know, heavy than the, you know, material ones. But what I wanted to show on this comp set that uh, I wanted to, you know, hide other parts of the tournament during this on this arena because it would be very heavy for our engine to have so many crowds, you know, behind you know, our characters. All, but still, I wanted to keep our, you know, Boclair Palace and our city visible. Yes. Visible, yeah. And we're super happy because we kind of, you know, make them think about the technical restrictions because concept artists, we try to. they don't think about it. But at this point, we're trying to figure out <laughs> even the solutions for the technical issues at this point, which is pretty cool. Uh, so again, please just take a look about uh, on the uh, layout on the left because it's very close to the final layout in our game, which looks like this. Uh, as you might see, there's the huge uh, fighting arena there that is left from the concept art. We got this uh, starting finish point, po point sorry, uh, for the horse races. We got this path leading through, through the tournament from the city to, to the vineyards, basically. And also, we have this kind of tent town for knights, merchants that are living there because we know that uh, this tournament is kind of temporary. So all these ideas, all these basic layouts, all these different uh, things are from, from Marta's team concept art, but we just took it, we kind of tweak it for, for distances, for the quests, for kind of the gameplay exper experience better. But then again, the basic layout, the basic idea, the basic kind of you know, feel to it is from Marta concept art, which was super exciting for us to, to make it because it saves us a tons and tons of, of work and time, basically. And the location right now in the game looks like this, uh, because for Marta it's super hard to see the verticality here, which for us is very important. So uh, as she said, she wanted to make the palace and city in a, in a background to be visible all the time, which is right now. But for us, we also have this uh, tournament on different levels. So the vistas are longer, much more interesting, it's not blocking anyway. It's kind of for, for, the, for the sake of the level design first, but also for the sake for the visual part to make interesting. Mm -hmm. Sorry guys. And the thing that our, uh, our artist from the Fr environment team gave it this kind of destroyed, um, destroyed castle theme to it, as you can see, which was not on the concept art. No, no, it wasn't our idea. And it was idea from some, some guy from the level design to put these ruins here, and it really, you know, makes its job because it's more romantic, you know, from, it's looked like from some kind of Arthurian tale or something. Exactly, knights and castles always works good, so this was good. <laughs> it's a good call for us. So yeah, so from concept art to this piece, both ideas are here. I think we're happy about the piece because yeah, the yeah, idea is yeah. there. I would love to, you know, be here and drink her and okay. <laughs> so this was kind of the blockout phase and thinking about the location overall. But also we got different, like, different kind of working together. That uh, first of all we had to uh, distribute the city with actually houses. So we went for the again for references here. Yeah, because you know. Mm, Italian Renaissance, it wasn't enough for us because copying is lazy and uncreative. 
and unprofessional. We are not lazy. Yeah. So we had to find something you know, which could be you no know, more fitting our you know Witcher world. And actually, our studio is placed in Krakow, which is perfect example of Polish Renaissance. It's it's Quite like a bag of references for us, basically, for the project. Yeah, the right photo is from the Krakow. It's very beautiful yeah, the, city. The first one is from the Krakow, on yeah, the right. So, um, yeah. uh, so it's very cool because we have this unique, you know, Slavic feeling. Maybe not Slavic, but, you know, Polish one. It's, it's not like, it's not just, you know, put it you know, from the photos from Venice. It would be, you know... We're not Lazy. creating, you know, pure historical game. We, we just have some, you know, references. We have some, uh, you know, analogies. But but we have to, you know, mix it with our, you know, imagination with other styles. And with the Witcher lore, basically, exactly. right? And the thing is that Marta team was super considerate about was the ground level, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we decided to draw in this very simple way, just from the front sides, because when you're going on you know, these very tight streets, you will see mostly the front side. So it should be you no, know, uh, you know, believable enough just from this on, on this very simple you know, concept art, to, and it should work you know just by seeing this you know very very simple shapes. And because we, we are the player which is walking on the ground, it's quite obvious. So we will mostly see the first floor, the, the, the ground floor. So we, we, fo we was mostly focu focusing on, on, the, on, the, on these arches, on these little shadows, stairs on the ground, uh, to create this mostly you know, believable and with quite interesting variety. And yeah, exactly. so and this is more examples. Uh, of course, we made some mistakes. For example, uh, we had to. For, we, we have a problems with proportions because you know these uh, interiors were quite you know small for our quest designers. So yeah, but because basically many of our houses have interiors, and our gameplay uh, designers they kind of like big spaces. So at some point we had like this issue that those houses were too small. So we had to kind of make it bigger for, to put the interior there. And also for the scale of the player, there were like times where the window was kind of here on a, on a knee, not in the, like in the front of the face. Or it would be perfect the, for, for a dwarf, but yeah, not for a girl. Yeah, for the, <laughs> uh, yeah. so... All the small, the, the doors were too small. So we had to kind of tweak those to match our gameplay needs. Yeah, we got first models from, from environment team and redraw our concepts and then they could continue their work on, on the proper, you know, proportions. Which was, wasn't hard work, basically just small tweaks, but the basic idea from the scratch was, was the same. And as Marta mentioned before, uh, we did use those houses mostly with fronts. There are some issues, I mean, so, so, uh, some places, oh, locations like here, which the, the wall is just basically a simple wall, but we use a very, very cool decoration here to make it look interesting, but not like a single flat wall. So then again, we kind of had to uh, figure out these locations, things, how we can cover those with decoration, but as you can see, almost every single house is covered with extra decoration to make it unique, to make it different, to make it interesting. And also, uh, as you might see right now, and looking at the concept art bag, the colors on the, of the houses are different. Nice team. Uh, thank you, Gerard. Uh, so, uh, because we had to, when we, when we took the concept art color one to one, and we put those on our level, the colors were super, super sad. It was kind of not the feeling what we were aiming for, because we wanted to make it bright, full of living, full of life city. So we just basically took very saturated colors, slapped different colors on it, trying to balance those colors out, and this is the results we have to give it more kind of different feel, more happy feel to the boucler. Which kind Actually, of it was historically accurate because they also loved bright was. colors, so... People like bright colors. We could accept it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also we had like poor district, which was the houses on the poor district, they were put on like the vineyards or fields. Basically they were, the, the, the player could go around the houses without any problems. So here we, we, we asked Marta team to give us all four sizes for the house. So was it hard for you guys? Oh, it no, wasn't bad. No, let's do it. So yeah, so as we said, because the houses are super easy to, to run around, basically like here you can go from every single different um, wall, we had to figure out every single side of the house to be different, kind of interesting. Yes. So it was kind of different approach for the rich houses. 
Yeah, but still we, we kept our, you know, very simple drawings, you know, without light, without perspective, because it's easier, you know, to work with each other in, in this kind of way on architecture, this kind of architecture. Exactly. Uh, and this was like this kind of approach for making it uh, very kind of sketchy, fast ideas dropping uh, experiment basically. But the other example is that when we're looking for kind of uh, different decoration things for us to create more interesting streets to, to cover those decorations, we were looking for references for kind of you know pictures and things that are actually uh, from real life. And we're like, guys, could you just like take these things and throw it on an, our concept art to figure how it's gonna look, how it's gonna feel? So we had like in few hours the um, answer the question of how we can create more interesting streets rather than just flat you know, fields with only like flowers wherever. But again, like here, small arch covered with flowers. Yeah. Also, just notice that without these arches, it will be quite boring from compositional point of view because you would only have this one direction going you know, through the whole street. And right now you have some you know, more horizontal lines, which you know, it's just about visual language and saying something more interesting than just you know following you know, one line all the time, all the time. Exactly. It was it was very fast. We just gave them some reference ideas. Guys, please check it out. And like in a day, we had like the answer question. Okay, we want this, and someone did the asset, and we actually used those assets to create this kind of arches, gates, and different things to make the, the, the streets kind of interesting and more... Yeah, it uh, would be very boring without these arches. We will have a big plane of you know, clear sky and nothing else. So it really works for us. Also, I just want to say that just look at these buildings. They are not very high because if they will be higher, it will be very claustrophobic and scary and not very pleasant. So, yeah, that was... Very and also the, 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 yeah, the other arch filled with wine, uh, wine thingies, foliage. Because Buclari was covered with foliage very, very densely because this, that gave us the feel of full alive environment which we were, were aiming for. And also the real life references for Italian, French cities, towns, they are also filled with different foliage. So this was the idea, also one of the main ideas for the decorations of the streets. Uh, yeah. But the other example was that uh, Marta, Marta's team basically uh, had, had kind of came up with the ideas with very strict restrictions for our team. Like here, we have this uh, cemetery idea for the location. And here we got like very, it was a very strict location because the layout here was done. The basically, the layout for, the, for this location was done. So we had like those different uh, two streets. We had like those different uh, vertical uh, levels and we have the entrance to catacombs there. So those things had to be untouched from the concept art point of view, but we just tell them, guys, you got those restrictions, please create the, seat as the, sorry, the cemetery and temple for us. And yeah. this is the final piece. One more time, we, were, we weren't focusing on, on, on you know, general you know, view, like, you know, it's, an, it's not the perfect rendered you know, illustration. It's very quick and raw uh, painting, which, which is, you know, our goal was to solve some very strict problem, you know, to, to figure out how this cemetery should look like. Uh, so, for example, this temple right now was quite temporary because it was the secondary thing uh, for, for us, you know, but of course it was, for some time, it was a very imp important place. Spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead right now, right? Okay. Okay, we wanted to have here our final boss fight inside this building. So it grown up to some kind of monster size of Byzantine temple. It was fucking huge. Yeah, I'm because sorry. sorry. <laughs> trying to fight a flying different creature in in a, in a kind of closed environment requires a lot of space and. Even that we loved how this temple looked like, it was so huge, it was impossible for us to actually put it on a level because it was starting to fight of the visual style with, and the visual kind of uh, appearance with palace, which was kind of not, exp exp you couldn't just do it, we had to make it smaller. But for us, Quest team and story team, for once they gave us help and said, okay guys, we don't gonna do a fight there. So we're like, yes, <laughs> yes, we can do something smaller. And this is the temple we did. Yeah, it's. I, f I think it's more accurate to our, you know, Italianish style, the Renaissance style. We have very similar towers on the plaza n next to the palace, but maybe more colorful. But it, you know, it just fits this place perfectly. 
It does, and it feels and more it's not so huge. templish and kind of churchish. Uh, and also, we got like a concept art for the basic feel of the how the cemetery might look. Even if it's not close to the final location, even here we can see some assets that we actually took from the concept art and basically built those. So we kind of took the idea from here and put it all together on on a level to 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 match the gameplay uh, location environment requirement basically. And this is the this is the cemetery for the game. It's kind of more overgrown because we had to kind of block the visual parts here and there. And also we add this kind of small bridge. And this bridge was serving like two purposes. The first one was to connecting the clever fox, something like that, the in here, yeah. some kind of in there <laughs> with the cemetery to make it much easier to get there. And also from cer certain angles, uh, we kind of have to block out the, f the field of view for the girls to kind of this kind of um, technical restrictions. So it was also an addition we did. But overall, this, uh, this cemetery looked like this. As you might see, the, uh, the gravestones are from the concept art, the temples from the concept art, those scripts in the back you're gonna see in a second are also from the concept art. So this basic idea is here. We, could, of course, need to tweak the, the locations for the gameplay requirements, for the quest, for the story, and for uh, basically the uh, player experience, but the basic idea still is the same. And also we got like this one concept art for the, for the uh, catacombs, which was, again, very rough. We've, we took those concept arts, we basically create the assets from the concept art, like the supports, like the portals, like the uh, altairs there, and we figured, okay, we got enough for us, let's now just do a block out pass and decorate the, the, the catacombs with quests in it. So just one concept art basically was enough for, you, for us to create the whole catacombs yeah, here. We don't have to you know, draw and paint every corner of this land, of this place. It would be stupid because it would take you know, so much time that we will never finish this game. So, you no, know, because environment team is also the creative team. So somebody you know, just don't remember about this, they think they're just crafters, but they are also an artist, so they can figure this out for themselves just by you know, little inspiration in one concept. It would be hard for you guys to draw every single corner for the catacombs, so it was pointless. And the last idea, I think the most happy for you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, because as I said, all these concepts which you saw already, they were very simple, they were very raw. Uh, we, we had just one day or, or even less to, to finish them. And, but from time to time we get you know, this great task like just create beautiful images. So yeah, uh, which which you know which perf which light, which details with colors, and this is one of them. It's a concept of wine festival actually, and it w it was cool because I can draw a lot of little things like this poster behind this guard, like some barrels you know, you know holded by by other peasants, and these little details. It was really cool to draw because I, I can do anything what I want and propose them to, to the environment team. Yeah, basically they had no restrictions. The only challenge here for us was to, for them, was to create a cool piece of art. And we had to take it and create a game out of this, which was kind of challenging because it's kind of Hard. So we, we took the idea, again, we took the environment look, feel, and this kind of festival feel to it. And this basically we just had to kind of clean up. Because as we know, it's the most important part for the games is the player experience. So we cannot block player too much. So we took the tents, we took like, we, we had a stage here, and also we create those paths for the girl to be easy for, for, for the player, for the girl to move around. So we created like three entrances from this part here to the main square, connecting with three different entrances or exits from the main square. And the basic idea was that those streets uh, were like one of the main streets in the Buclair there, and those streets had to be uh, easy by, to ride with horse. So it has to be like kind of clear path for the gallery to move on. But basically, uh, the idea we took was here. You're gonna see the the the, the decoration part in a, in a minute. But also, uh, with the stage in the back, we had like because. The, this is the most challenging location, technical challenging location, I would say, in our game. So the kind of the part also of the stage with crowds having fun there, having some fun dancing and singing, was kind of also technical challenging. So we had to 
block it out from entering. I mean, just to block out the popping of assets, we just use kind of the creation wall over it. To, so, the, so basically, the player, while entering to this location, he won't see the assets popping. So this was this kind of visual wall that actually looks like a decoration. And the location is this. We got the tents. We got the field of people uh, having drinks and, and, and food here with the tents. The stage is, you know, again, with people having fun. Yeah, it's not overcrowded like on the concert, but still you can feel that there's a lot of, you know, living things and exactly. very, you know, active. You know. And the tents are bigger, they are wider, because right now we can easily go there and move around before it was possible for the concept art point of view. But right now we can seriously go there and have fun to see how it actually looks. So again, this was Marta's idea of, of the, of the uh, location. We kind of took it, um, you know, break it down for the gameplay game game yeah, environment. It was all about atmosphere from my side, and they tried to, you know, make it playable. <laughs> yeah, and right now we're just trying to figure if Marta is happy about it or not, but I hope she is. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, great. Yeah, okay. I love it. <laughs> And also, as we talked before about the Lego blocks, here also Marta use a Lego blocks, right? Yeah, uh, for, as you can saw on, on this um, festival wine cups, there was a lot of tents. Uh, so I created a few very you know, simple concepts of, of, of them, which could be very flexible just by adding a few walls. You could recreate this for, for a stable, for a tournament, where you have a lot of knights and they would probably want to kept the horses, you know, you know, somewhere. And the same thing it was working with merchant tents um, on the next slide. Uh, just by adding some little details like these patterns or, you know, this you know, very, you know, unique chairs and tables uh, and other stuff inside, I could say, you know, whole new story, small story, but quite new one, you know, just by this one, one little thing. No. Exactly. I would say this is like the best and the most perfect concept art for a 3D art team to, to actually make it. There are tons of details that selling this idea. There's even the idea of whole creation of the small kind of location with decoration, with uh, this armory things there, like baskets and different things. So basically, just you can we could just take take this concept art and make it like a merchant stand from from scratch, which actually we did for for even for the uh, tournament part. And it's cool composition. Besides, we can see nothing in the <laughs> on the screen. So yeah, so this was really cool for us to get this concept art because uh, making for us making research is also very time consuming. With with this, we we had like a lot of free free time. So those are so those are this example guys. And the takeaway here for you. Like the main two takeaways I would say here is like work together, together, always work together, never try to go by yourself because yeah. without this. For, for, exam for example, for me, I would be blind without our environment team because uh, you know, I have a rich imagination, I hope so, but I can't, I mean, I can't imagine everything. Sometimes just, uh, you have to stay on the level and see how it's going to work when you are a player, when you are a Geralt. So, Without them, uh, I think I could draw something, but it couldn't work uh, from the gameplay you know, point of view. Yeah, because in the end we are making game, not like nice pictures, and we have to remember that. And also, this work gave us a lot of inspiration, a lot of like this kind of one step closer to the final uh, piece. So it was also like sharing inspiration, sharing ideas, sharing different things. So it's also super important, guys, for you to to inspire yourself inside your teams or also with different teams. Every idea was crucial, was like a gold idea every single time. We never throw the idea away because someone said, even when it sounds stupid, was like, cool, let's try it out. Every idea is like a gold right now. So inspire each other, always talk to each other, inspire each other. Yeah, it's very impressive when, when you can see you know, effects of the environment team for me, because um, I had a lots of problems, for example, with designing parts of the Buckler. So I figured out whole architecture, you know, style for it. Uh, I create tons of different sketches, and then they put this together in one location. And I was just jaw dropping when I was first playing this on this level. So. No. Also very exciting for us to see our work actually come to life, for you guys, basically. Um, so those are the takeaways. I hope you can 
take it away from you with you guys and use it. Uh, so thank you for, for the presentation. But b before we're gonna jump for the Q&A session, uh, our studio is growing and we are hiring every single kind of field right now. And there's Marisha in the back, say hi to Marisha. You can go to her, talk with her, and we are trying to grab very talented people here, guys. So uh, both to Krakow and in Warsaw. So if you're interested, find Marisha and talk with her. We are super excited for, for looking for a new But Krakow was the inspiration team. for the two songs, so well, you know, Krakow is cool. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So guys, if you have like, we have like any time for the question we session? We have like uh, basically a few minutes. So maybe one or two questions? Short yes. questions, guys, or not? Okay. Uh, hi, thanks for the great hi. presentation hi. and hi. thanks for the great job on the game. It's Thank awesome. You. Uh, I have a question about the restrictions that you get the, when you start working on a location. What kind of teams do you give you restrictions? Of course, you get the engine restrictions, but do you get like restrictions from game design part, quest team part? Yeah, we got all, all the restrictions you just said, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, do they have like the design, the whole overall design, or they have like pre preliminary ideas? Then you give them the concept and they finalize the game design. I want to know what comes first in your studio game design or concept art? Well, it depends on the location. At some point, you got this going the same side tracks on the same time. Uh, when we were work working on this kind of super important location, we had like a tons of concept art trying to figure how we can touch the uh, gameplay and story kind of challenges. But also when for this kind of smaller locations, we kind of also did those without any concept art, just trying to figure out with the team of the quest designers what they want for us, what they need for us. Uh, so this kind of, the, the question was, what was more important for us? And we kind of throw the resources on the most important things. So I hope this answered the question. Uh, it depends, because okay, sorry. Torment is a quite nice example. Because when I was drawing this first version of concept, I, I, our quest designers weren't sure what they want exactly put in the game. So that's why on the concept you can find a justing fight. And we don't have in the final game. They decided to put just the horse racings. So I came first with my concept in this you know, specific case. But sometimes they, they requested from me, for example, Cockatrice Inn uh, on the side of the river in Tucson. And I just very strict restriction from them, how it should look, it, there should be some approach from the, riv from the river, from, from the boat, uh, for, the for the player. So it, it's, as I said, it depends. It's, it's it's, it's not, you know, you know, stuck on the one, just one approach. Oh, and I think I should throw it to you. Hey. Whoa. Nice <laughs> throw. Cool. Any more questions, Hello. guys? I actually have uh, two questions. Uh, first question is, uh, how long um, approximately does it take uh, to uh, create a concept art of the area, like, for example, with the houses, right? and mm -hmm. to uh, put it into the production pi pipeline, right? And uh, how do you handle changes? I mean, uh, do you create like CD model first, see mistakes and then fix it, or maybe uh, uh, you see mistakes on the concept, or concept art itself, mm -hmm. and how do you handle the situations? Oh my, it's very tough thing, because my producer al always, you know, has this question for me, Marta, how long it's going to take for you? I, I never know, <laughs> to be honest. I try to work as fast as is possible. But they do work fast, extremely fast. I guarantee that. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, so, we, as, we, as I said, we are not fond of our concepts. If you have to then throw them away and, just, you know, it's not like we're creating illustrations and they don't have to be, you know, so beautiful and I, pro I most of these things, I won't put this on, on my, in my portfolio, in my final portfolio. Not because they are bad, but just because they are, just uh, they are pure, you know, design documents, and uh, yeah. So mm, sometimes I just I just need you know one day, but sometimes I, I, I'm stuck with some idea. I can find good reference. Uh, Pass of Buclair was one of the toughest topic from our game. It took s few weeks to figure out the whole localization, local, localization for for this whole environment, because it contains so many elements like, you know, level design, you know, architecture details, you know, so it's, it's hard to say. 
I, I can, it is hard. It I can is hard never to predict, say. you know. It's never yeah. it's, it's, uh, basically, it's never enough time for, for, for work. I think we need Pokeball. One more. So I hope it helps, but you know, it's a tough question, a really tough question. I choose yeah, you. Pretty good. Ooh. Yes, I think that will be all. Thank you. Okay, guys. So you can also. Thank you. Thank you.